At the time we were living in Liberia and we went to a we went to a training um, put on in Liberia that was enough to pique my interest. They said the same thing that you say John and that is don't memorize your story. Okay, but they gave no other way other than to memorize the story. Then a year later, the next time we were back, we said, well, let us get more training here. And we said, oh, let's get a hold of John. And it was the fall time, so we came to the November training. And the thing that I continue to appreciate about you is you give a way that is not just saying, don't memorize the story. And I have to say that's that's why we continue with Bible telling and not with some of the others. And so for that, I say thank you, John, um, because that has been instrumental in, in us doing what we do. Well, um, I know when he came back from the training in Liberia, he was like, this is gonna be key, you know, because storytelling is so crucial over there that uh, it's the way that their histories are preserved. And so it's a, it's a natural outlet for getting the gospel out there. So when he came back, we said this, we were both excited to say, let's go with this, you know. Our training was good. The Bible telling, you know, you, the difference between a rote story and a, and a told story and, and how, you know, the training, I, I just would encourage people to come to the training because even when I thought I may have known something about story, about telling a story, the fact of the matter is I got schooled and, and it was good. <laughs> Coming to the training just helped us step in the story and it expanded around us as we got to practice it and being in a, a group with folks that um, over the course of the, the few days we felt safe to stumble and learn from each other, you know, that maybe our paths wouldn't have crossed any other way. I think the other thing was one day you mentioned um, the how you were over I think in Southeast Asia and you did a workshop with one day you're going to cook the story you're going to prepare food that will help you tell the story and then there was an art day and then there was a drama day and it just um, it just expanded the idea of storytelling so much in my mind and there's so many different ways to get to folks' hearts through this story that um, even our girls are, uh, they've been teaching Sunday school in Creo in Sierra Leone and they use the Bible telling method. That being able to draw those gifts out in the kids and so that way they're able to show, share the story from their heart and their giftings which just helps the body of Christ develop even more fully. So it's so much more than sharing the story. Um, our focus before had been raising up pastors to and plant churches that are Bible telling churches. Um, and in each of those spots there were pastors wives that I would try to work with little by little but get them especially interested in in the women of the Bible, what they went through. There's so many similarities as we look through the Bible into that's very applicable to their culture, um, especially with some of the ways that women are treated in that culture uh, aren't too different from some of the Old Testament stories, fortunately or unfortunately. So um, they're women they can relate to. There will be stories that they will want to share and they'll say, well, you remember Ruth and 
what happened to her. You know, we've all known what it's like to be in a time of no food. So just looking at some of the great women in the Bible and, and having them know this just isn't a man's story, that God loves women and holds them in great esteem as well. So right. we're looking forward to going back and training the key women so it can trickle down. Um, the imam has, in this area, has several wives. Now, um, one, of, one of our ladies every week will go into the imam's home <laughs> and recount the stories because the wives want to know what's going on inside of the church. You and I would never be allowed to go into that house and tell a Bible story. Every week they go in and they tell the story that was given in church and they have their own little service right in his own house. Storytelling works. The believers are taking the stories and going with them. We can bring in other things, but the fact is that we've, we've seen some of what they're doing, and it's really exciting. You know, you get a lot more bang for your buck with kids because they'll just go and blab it all over. And um, there's been some women that, that have come back and said, um, is this you know, so-and-so came back and told me this story. I just don't know if I believe that's true or not, you know. And so it draws the parents back, and it, it uh, goes across the kids. You know, to missionaries or people who might go out on the mission field, it's a way to learn about culture. These people will explain their culture to you in ways that will take you years to get to by just mm -hmm. talking it out and watching. But by finding out what they find important about this story, they're teaching you what it is to be in their culture. And I think that this is such a great tool for missionaries, just on the, aside from the biblical going forward, but on the learning of what's going on, this is huge. We've, we've walked away from church at times and said, <laughs> wow, that makes so much sense now yeah. because, you know, they were saying this and that fits into culture here and here and here. And I didn't understand that in these ways as it, as it refers to this. And so That's what makes this so valuable is, is that folks get to own the stories for themselves and how what a great part the holy spirit plays in as these stories are told that he meets him right where they're at for us i think one of the best benefits of using this method is is that that our audience gets to teach us you know there's i know that some folks would walk into our church and say how could this woman uh, she doesn't read, she doesn't write, she's only lived in this village, she's just lived hand to mouth, what could she have to teach me? Some folks could say that, you know, this is a mud floor church, whatever. And she'll hear a story and she'll say something so deeply profound, we just kind of look at each other and go, wow. And that's the body of Christ learning together, you know. So many times in Africa and third world situations, uh, there's so much paternalism. We're going to come over and teach you this so that you'll know the right way and then you can tell others in the right way. And this way the Word and the Holy Spirit are in charge. But it helps pull us out of the cultural equation and it's them inter interacting with God, His Holy Spirit and the Word and it's something that they can easily take away. They don't have to memorize. They can say, this, this is a great story I heard. It's not westernized. It's not, it's just like you said, telling the story and letting him and his word speak to people right where they're at. And how great is that? Yeah, they will come up with things that I would have never guessed <laughs> to say, okay, it's obvious this one's prayer, you know. 
And had I come up with 10 different sermons on the same thing, I would not have come up with that. So uh, from a mission standpoint, I think this is so key because it's meeting them right where they're at. And we have seen God do some amazing things mm -hmm. and, and changing people's lives just through that. After coming through your training, your November training, um, we decided that, hey, this is good. We, we want to get, get this out. So uh, for three years, we sent teachers out into the villages to teach them stories so they could lead their villages. And we're going to be adding in some technical training the, um, so we can teach people how to sew or how to be carpenters. And so when they go back to their village, if they want to, uh, if they want to have a trade, um, they can come and learn the trade and learn a certain number of stories and then, and then head back to their village. To that's been our journey over the last few years was uh, we started off by sending the teachers out into, we started with 30 different villages and uh, we did that for uh, just over three years. And then, um, then we started building classrooms to make a campus and why we've been doing that we said, you know, one campus just isn't enough, and we're not ready to put campuses all over creation. So, uh, how can we, how can we make a larger impact? And the radio station is what, what came up. Um, I've often thought that we really don't even know how far the stories are traveled, um, and how God has brought. Um, unlikely people to Christ that we may not know until we get home to heaven. We're hoping, as, as the radio station comes up, we're hoping to start with five different languages. And we'll do, you know, two-hour, three-hour blocks of, of time, and we'll do a Creo, a Timni, a Susu, a Fula, and maybe a Mindy. Um, and so over the course of the next year, we're going to be doing a lot more translating and, and getting that process moving. Just, I think the pride of being able to tell the story and hear the story in your own language is just going to be so contagious that um, just being able to hear the, the, at least the five that we're going to start with and their the five are dominant where we're at, and um, just being able to hear something in your own language that your mother whispered in your ear when you were a baby, being able to hear that, it's just going to take root so much faster. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I do thank God for you, John, and I hope that you are able to continue to get the word out there about Bible telling because it has made a huge impact in our lives. It's made an impact over there and I know that God has been in it because God has used it and I know he will continue to use it and so we pray that God continues to provide for you and that your your message continues to go out and I praise God for what he's done through you and say thank you. Mm -hmm.